loving yourself. Please let's run the bumper. She is back. She is amazing. She is bubbly as ever. Jane, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mikali. Good Our soul you. healing <laughs> coach. <laughs> I know where you're saying this. <laughs> no, we we yeah. need it. I think we need it. Thank as you. we heal other parts of ourselves, mm -hmm. then we forget the soul. Yeah. And that we need you. to. Yeah. Wow, today's conversation is Kirea. <clears throat> I am, I am waiting ready? for it. <laughs> <laughs> and let's get it started. It's, it's tied in with the quote of the day when yeah. we talk about forgiveness. And we, we're told to forgive and forget. Yeah. And to for, according to the Bible, to not forgive 70 times 77. In a something day. close to that. 70 times 7 in a day. Seven t in a day. In a day. <laughs> Which technically every day you have to repeat that, you know. <laughs> okay. Maybe yeah. can't be exaggerated. Kid Dogo 77. But you know, like it's a lot. <laughs> it's and a it's lot. not easy. And mm -hmm. the fact that it's highlighted that way, mm -hmm. even in the Bible, then that means it's not something that comes easily to people that yeah. we struggle with. Yeah. And today we're not talking about just forgiving everybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. We're talking about forgiving ourselves. Yes, and, and I think it's easy sometimes to look outward than look inward yeah. because of what you're going to see inside, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like looking at yourself in the mirror. And I think the last time we talked, you talked about looking at yourself in the mirror in a different di dimension. Like, who are you? Who, who am I? Are yeah. you aware of who you are, you know? Yes. So, and, and I think a lot of things around how we treat other people, it's how we treat ourselves. Because our relationship with other people is an extension of who we are. Whew. Technically, we don't know it. But that's how we behave. Like, if I can't forgive myself, Mikali, why should I forgive you? If I don't love myself, how can I love you? I can't. Mm. If I'm not kind to myself, how can I be kind to you? So there's this quote by Jack. It says that compassion is uh, compassion to others without compassion to self is incomplete. Because it has to start inward and then it flows out. Yeah. You give what you have. You love your neighbor as yourself. You forgive others as you forgive yourself. You know, dear Lord, forgive me for my sins as I forgive other people. You know, yes, and that's the part that we're like. We don't like. <laughs> I don't know. Like we, we've said that thing since we were kids. But is it in? So no, we don't do it. I actually have never thought about it. <laughs> yeah, like that because it's we easy. just recite it. Yeah, it's easy to ignore, not to process, and I think. The last time we had this conversation, I said, whatever you don't deal, you don't heal. Yes. So you, we say it. We say things. We say, hi, I'm good. I'm fine. I, I'm kind, you know. Are you angry? No. I mean, we had a, a small chat about that. Are you angry? No, I'm not angry. I'm okay. You know. And so Do you know like, how ridiculous you'd be walking <laughs> around town and you bump into people, you know. It's like, hi, Mukali. How are you doing today? I'm, <laughs> I'm upset. Okay. <laughs> you know. I'm angry. <laughs> And that's the reality, actually. That's what you should do because it also gives people power also to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And it also, it's a way of teaching others that it's okay for you to be where you are. And I, there's this conversation that I was selling. I went to a shop and yes. um, I was talking to the guy who owns the shop. And I walk into the shop and the guy's not there and I find the assistant. And I'm asking her, she's talking to me and I'm like, no, um, I'm not okay. I'm frustrated. And then she looks at me and uh, my husband was there. He looks at me as well, like, we are not going to have this conversation here now. And I sit down and tell her, I'm not okay because when I came here, the person I was talking to on phone did not tell me they are not here. And I wish they had told me they are not here. I would have dealt with you. I would come prepared. Now I have to sit, reorganize my mind on how I'm going to have this conversation with you. And it was such a beautiful experience because we ended up... Uh, having a very one-on-one -on -one conversation with that lady. We took contacts. We are friends now. We are laughing what? about it, you know? So it's, <laughs> I think people want to see the real you. Okay. And I think so, because all of us, we are wearing masks then. Yes. We, we just have superficial relationship. We have superficial conversation. We have superficial families, you know? Where does it come from? What, what happened? Why is it okay or easier for us to just wear masks and move on and put layers and layers on top of what we're really feeling? I like that conversation. That's culture. That's where we're coming from. That's mm -hmm. home. That's family. Mm -hmm. That is the African tradition. Yeah. We don't have these conversations. Let's, I mean, and, and for a very long time, and, and looking back in the, in the history and the journey that we've come, there are some conversations that are not, they are not, I mean, it's, they're unheard of in a family, in an African family home. Yes. At least now with the modern families, we're accepting, like, <coughs> conversation around sex, conversation about alcohol, conversation, conversation around boys and dating. You know, when you're in, like, it's normal when you get to teenage that you want to have this experience with a boy and a girl. Yes. Dating, or probably it's boyfriend, girlfriend thing, you know. Mm. Would you even go and tell him, mom, I have this boyfriend from home, you know, it's mm. from school, mm. and, and it's a conversation that you're not supposed to have. So technically, because they did not know how to handle us growing up, how we've been parenting. So how then are we able to speak the truth? There's always a consequence, you know? Yeah. And every time you get a negative feedback from telling the <coughs> truth, you shut. 
It's, it's like a way of building bricks and walls. If I tell you the truth, you hurt me, I build another wall. I go tell the next person they hurt me or they don't deal, build another wall. So we are a series of walls. And I think it comes from our culture, yeah. and, and um, even our school setup. Mm -hmm. Like teachers, the only thing they used to know is beat. Yes. You make noise beat. You know, so now at least we are discussing about children. Every time you see a strange behavior in a child, mm -hmm. figure out where, it, where it's coming from. Yeah. Probably it's, a, it's an outlet. It's a coping mechanism for them. Probably they are, they are really gifted in, in talking, yeah. nurture it, you know. But before it used to be like, you're making noise, punishment, noise makers, that clean the class, true. you know. Yeah. Sometimes you answer the teacher ridiculously. Probably <coughs> in your mind that was the best answer you could give. Yeah. But to the teachers, like, are you disrespecting me? And you're, you're, there's a backlash for it. So there's a way we have learned to survive, and that is by wearing masks. Because honesty comes at a price. But how many are willing to pay that price? What? How many are willing to lose that friend? Mm. How many are willing to lose that relationship with a family member? How many are willing to lose that job for being honest to the boss? Like, I would rather just find a way of surviving I'll just, here. Yeah, I'll just be quiet over here. My corner doesn't look so bad, mm. you know, instead yeah. of, like, facing up to our truths. And that is the same way we don't face what is happening inside us. Exactly. That we are always carrying burdens of things that happened to us, mm -hmm. things that were done to us, things that we did to others, things that we forgot. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I like the way you're bringing it even. There's what we did and also what we received. Yes. And I've also learned there's a lot of power around uh, being a victim. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my God, you went through this. They're like, no, you guys don't shout at Mikali. She went through this and this and this like 10 years ago and you're supposed to be comfortable with that because you went through that. There's a leverage that we give you and there's a comfort and a support system that we give you because you are carrying a victim tag. And I mean, why would I want to trade the victim tags and it's opening doors for me? Mm -hmm. Hell no, let me keep carrying it, you know? It's a good, it's a good badge for me to open doors. Like, no, and, and, and I think sometimes <coughs> we miss it, you know? Like if, for example, you went through a very, un unfortunately, some, some experiences are really bad, eh? like yeah. a grief or, or a loss, you mm -hmm. know, and people would be like, don't say that. They lost their mom, you know, don't say that. They lost their dad. Don't say that, you know, yeah. they, they, they've gone through a hard time. And technically you feel shielded and you walk on eggshells. Eh? And yeah. for some, they know how to take advantage of that. It is opening doors. It is giving them credit. It is giving them passes, you know, and every time you experience that leverage or um, a positive uh, gain from your experience and it's a bad experience you prefer being a victim than dealing with it and moving to the next level so if it's working for me why why should i leave it no but no. it will catch up with you at some point it does it does because i mean like like <coughs> we say not everyone will know your experience you know yeah and i think sometimes when you rehash it you'll get to a point people will be like when did that happen 20 years ago and now you want us to sit here and discuss about what happened 20 years ago y are you getting yeah. so and that's why people now start getting angry and you start carrying emotions of anger bitterness and resentment because no one understands me they did for a season but you need to grow and have new experiences you know and there's this thing that says um our, our experiences are as a result of our perception so mm -hmm. like if we change our perception we change our experiences you know yeah. so the two have to work uh, they walk in tandem one with the other one you know mm -hmm. so yes i hurt you and i said i'm sorry you know and i'm genuinely sorry and let's talk about it and most of us we don't talk about it we say sorry and we move on but sorry is it's two way you know if, if i want us to deal with it i can tell you i'm sorry <coughs> i did this and you say yeah you did this and this to me and um, this is what i felt and i forgive you you're forgiving from okay. a point of knowledge okay so most of us we forgive from a point of like just moving on i forgive but what did you forgive so we need to break it down. We need to break this it down. This is what you did to me. This is what you did and to me. And this is what I'm forgiving. And this is what it made me feel. Okay. Oh. And this person will explain like, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant, I probably my intentions were not like that. And I'm sorry. You know, you also, you also get to understand each other. Because that kind of apology would be so nice. Really good. Yeah. Really worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Moses is just poly. Yeah. Poly ishe, you know. Yeah, uh, we say like that, by the yeah. poly. Sin me kumbia poly. Kwani mm. uski, you know, mm. like kwani taka nkumbia poly marangapi. Yeah. Know? How many times do you want me to tell you sorry? That is not an apology. Because you did not understand where I was coming from. Yeah. What my emotions were, how you hurt me. Then that means tomorrow you'll do it again. Because it's still, it's a theoretical sorry, you know. And I think we are also very emotional and in touch in that part where when you say you're sorry to me, I'm able to see how genuine you are. I'm able to feel it. Mm. So until I feel that you're genuinely uh, okay. sorry, then sometimes I'll just accept it just yeah. because you said it. And it's not honest. You'll always be remembering. Yeah, this person hurt me. They did this and this to me. Ten years later, you say like, no, 
they hurt me. So I've, I've still not moved on, you know? I, I still have my guard up because we didn't go through this, you know? Yeah. And I think when you're having a relationship, and, and, and remember last time when I was talking about uh, parent baggage, mm -hmm. I think it is difficult for parents to tell their children they're sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, that conversation of dealing, we don't deal with, with parents. So it's, it's, the story is never said, you know. I think I'm providing school fees. You're you're going. You're dressing up well. You are eating. What else do you want to know? We move past it. There's no discussing this, you know. Yeah. But on the other hand, when you teach a child to say sorry, you're also learning to to grow, and it's something that they pick in them, and they're also able to transfer it forward. That's why I said, Mikali, these are things you've learned growing up. If you never said sorry in your house, how will then you how will you tell people sorry out here and generally mean it? Yeah. The story is just let's move on. Mm -hmm. until tomorrow comes and then the reaction and you know the interesting thing about uh, such an apology mm -hmm. there's a it reaches a, a time that the reaction you give for a very small thing is not uh, in parallel with with the way you're reacting you know like okay. i can just step on you and you the way you I react i'm like out. whoa i just stepped on you you know that's, like a, a, that's a sign yeah, oh that this person has a lot of baggage it's not the stepping that is a problem the stepping reminded them of something else that they are reacting to or undealt issues. And you know, like even in couple relationships, this is what we get a lot. Eh? We, one thing happens and, and the story blows up and you're, we start talking about things that you did three months ago and you're like, oh, I did this three months ago. I yes. don't remember that, you know? Yeah. And it's, 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 it's how we've learned to survive. And it's, a, it's an uncoping mechanism because it's not good. So we, as long as it's working for us, let's do it. When you we know, get to the end, we'll figure it out. Generally, forgiveness, mm. even outwardly, is not easy sometimes to some mm. people. Yeah. Now, forgiving yourself, what do I need to do for, uh, for me to get to a place of I'm at peace with me mm. and I know maybe I will never be able to do that thing that I didn't do 55 years ago, mm -hmm. but I need to make peace with the fact that it didn't happen. Mm. We're going to pick up on that after this very short commercial break. Please share your stories with that with us. If you have any questions whatsoever, triple one triple four triple one. That is our SMS line. We will be right back after this break. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali. We are talking about forgiveness and most importantly, forgiving yourself. And just before the break, I wanted to find out what are some of the symptoms of, you know, I am not forgiving, especially myself. Mm. How do I know? What are the telltale signs of I'm carrying a lot of baggage? Okay, there are a lot of signs around it, uh, Mikali, but I think I'm going to mention four okay. that, that are very common. Okay. One, it's extreme anger. Extreme anger. There's anger. There's normal anger where something happens and I get over it and it comes down and I go back to normal. But there's this anger that carries still. That even when I go to the house, it happened in the morning, but in the evening I'm still angry. Mm. And some things, it's absorbing emotions from other people easily because you can relate to that, but you've not dealt with it. So if someone else is angry at you, you absorb it because you're also angry at yourself. So be like, and it can come in two ways. How could they think like that? Because you're judging yourself. Or... How, um, how can I do that to other people? I'm still not okay, mm. you know? That is one of the biggest signs. Um, two, it's a lot of sadness. There's a sense of grief that is not attached to anything. You can be seated here and sad. People can be happy around you, but you're sad. Internally, you're feeling sad. And it's just a bottle of emotions, you know? And the third one, I think, that is very common is a lot of bitterness okay. in my speech. And bitterness, I mean, it's in the sense of also negativity. You don't see anything good about yourself, about other people. And technically, if you can't see anything good about yourself, how can you see anything good about other people? That's, That's true. next to impossible. Yeah. And there's another interesting one. It's about hoarding. And I think that is a conversation that we need also to talk about. Okay, because please indulge me. It's a whole disorder in itself. You hoard things. You keep things. You, you're, you, I mean, everything. Clothes that you don't wear, you have them. Plastics that you have for <laughs> blue band, you can't eat Isha as you don't tupa the bottle. <laughs> Omo uh, Imeisha, you keep the plastic, <laughs> chupaya maji, I, I will use them for something else. And you yes, you'll use them for something. <laughs> but paper <No>. bag. <laughs> paper bag, yeah, paper bag, yeah, paper bag, which we all have, you know. Yeah. And, and technically what they're telling us, they're, they're things we are holding on to. Oh, really? It's just a sign of, and there's, there's a normal level of keeping up things. Yes, But okay, there's a thanks. level, when it comes <laughs> holding, it's, and even the people don't even have spaces in their house. The house is so yeah. cluttered up, you can only sit down, probably move to the kitchen, and mm. that's it. 
because there are things, there are chairs, there are mats. I saw something, there are just a pile of things around them. And it shows the state of their inner being. If okay. your soul is in that mess, you start projecting it outward. And others, it's as simple as the closet or mm. shoes. You have mm. a pair of like 100 shoes. You cannot wear 100 shoes, Mikali. You need like 10 or 20 if you go max so the fact that I you feel find targeted <laughs> no but sorry it's fine. <laughs> sorry I, I didn't i didn't mean to <laughs> no 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 but no, technically no, no, really like there's something you are you're not dealing with you mm. know because mm. the way we believe and, and i think it's a sense of um whatever is uh, there in the future and whatever is in the past that's already gone yes it's about enjoying the present we we live for the moments of within and i think that i mean it's it's something that we need to choose to actively live within so the moment you realize you're either living back in the past or you're anticipating a future you're not living in the now because now is mm. is unstable for you. The emotions are there, the baggage is there, the pain is there, you know. And I think sometimes when you look at even self low self esteem in the long run, it's it's an issue of unforgiveness at some point. Okay. And um, well, in, it's a dynamic because it's a secondary symptom, not a direct symptom. Mm -hmm. There are other symptoms around it, mm -hmm. but it can also be a reflection that I have not dealt with something that I've experienced. And um, if I am broken. Everything around me will tell I'm broken. Anyone with a sixth sense or someone with a lot we'll and fully aware will pick it out. And I think um, we can just to blanket it. Okay. You have to start the journey of being self-aware. Who am I? What does this experience mean? What did this experience mean to me? What did make me feel? And once I deal with that and I say, I was a victim. Yes, I forgive my perpetrator. Yes, I forgive myself for being a victim as well. Because sometimes you realize I put myself in that position. Yeah. And if you put yourself in that position, you didn't know any better. Now that I know any better, this is how I'm going to move forward. And you make a resolution around it. And one of the best ways also to carry forward with this is also journaling the process. Sometimes we forget, you know. You know, sometimes you, we can have like, uh, and let's talk about relationship. People have a tendency of going back to the ex. Mm. Why? You, f you forgot why you left him. So if you write it down like, I, I, want, I, feel, like going, I feel like calling him. No, let me, let me see why did I leave him in the first place. Yes. There was a good reason. It was for me, you know, that we do stuff for us. And then we can be able to project or even just um, attach other people or influence other people around us, you know. Yeah. yeah, so those are the four key signs. And hoarding is very interesting because I know most of us, we come from a home where we have sufuria, zimetoboka. Yes. You're not throwing them away. We well, have and then you forget use. that kalkoka metoboka. <laughs> then you yeah. find yourself using it and then you go, oh, yeah. You like, why don't I ever throw them away? <laughs> so once in a while, I'll have like a, you know, like a cleaning hole and I'll just be putting it le and even in that process of like i'm putting everything away yeah there are things yes. even oh, i have no. not worn for many <laughs> many years i just feel like i decluttering is hard it like is. they remind you of something or an experience or a situation or, or when even you bought an expectation them. Mm -hmm. i will fit into that dress one day mm -hmm. because okay. you <laughs> <laughs> you squeezed into it once and it didn't work out. Yes. And you just like, I'll imagine I'll go to the gym. He's, you're still Five stuck years there. later, you never went. <laughs> and you're still holding on to the dress. I know the beautiful thing is, when you experience the journey of your life, one yeah. day you're here, one day you're here, one day yeah. you're here. You know, like, enjoy all seasons. Yeah. You know? But sometimes you want to either live in the future of what you want to become. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you're here, but your mind is not here. You're not present. Mm. You're in the, I want to buy a house. I want to buy a house. So, even when you're living in a nice house that you can appreciate, or you're with friends that you can appreciate, you're with family that you can love, your mind is not there. You're, you're not know? in the moment. You're focused on the future. Yeah. And then there's now the other part that is stuck in the past, where a word was said and that's it. An experience came and your life was shattered and you're still there. And you find people in the 30s and like, there was, there was one time I was a great man. You know that? You're still there. They are still great right now. But that experience is what they want to hold on to because it's familiar to them or it's an experience they've had, you know. And they're not willing to let go and enjoy now and the present. So when you're self-aware, there's a way you get to absorb your environment. Mm -hmm. Can you come and see the grass and you're like, this grass looks beautiful today. Oh my God, these flowers are blossoming, you know. We don't do that. No. And, and we just move first. After yeah. maybe a week, we're like, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, because you never took time to just see it, appreciate it. You, sit under, you sit under the shadow and you say, let me, let me experience this shadow, you know? Yeah. And sometimes just being in the present, you see things, you appreciate people, you see people, you can love genuinely, mm -hmm. you can forgive genuinely. And you see the senses of the, uh, the idea of being self-aware yeah. is that you're able to understand. I can also be in that circumstances. I mean, uh, understanding that this person is a human being like me. Yeah. So if they offend me, that means I can also offend them. It's, yes, it's human. True. And yeah. I think to err is human. That is yeah. something that we, we need to believe. Mm -hmm. And if I can forgive other people, if I can forgive, if, if I can put myself in their shoes in a level of understanding, it will be easy to forgive and let go. 
Anytime we take things personal, you feel it's an attack on yourself, there's something you have not dealt. Because I can come and tell you, Mukali, ah, today you're, why did you wear a green dress? Then it takes you back to an experience with a green dress. So the, everything comes out like, how could she tell me I'm wearing a green dress? You know, like it's mm -hmm. a green dress, but mm -hmm. you're reacting, overreacting to something. And that technically puts you in a position where you're like, if you're fully aware of yourself, you'd be like, yes, this has taken me back to that place, but this is not it. This is a different experience and I will make it different from the other time. Even how I respond to you matters a lot yes. in that moment. Yes. But then I have to be self-aware, like you said. Yes. I have to be self-aware and I know... In, in, in being self-aware, then I know what my triggers could be and mm -hmm. spot them out yeah. and not react how they've reacted Before. in the past. Yes, And it also gives you a space also to build up on the self-care tips mm -hmm. where you understand I'm taking care of myself first. I'm going to love myself in a way that I will be able to love you. And I, and I think I like the Bible because it says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. There is no way. Any other thing you're giving is a fake version of what you're thinking love is but it's not love you know and that's why we get tired of like i did this for you so many times how could you not see because it was not coming from inward outward Ooh. it was you, you're trying to express something that okay love should be kind so i need to be kind to this person but you're not kind to yourself but if i am kind to myself it's easy even for me to be kind to you if mm -hmm. i love myself i will love you if i'm at peace with myself yes everything around me will be at peace and maybe someone would ask how do i show love to myself then how do mm -hmm. I show care to myself? How do I, what I, how do I forgive myself? What is that, th what is that thing? Because if I want to show you kindness, yeah. I'd be like, oh, you look so pretty today. Yeah. Can I help you down the stairs? Mm -hmm. Can I, you know, like yeah. there's a way I know how to do this, mm -hmm. but how do I do that to me? Well, Mukali, when you're, when you're walking the journey of, um, of uh, doing, uh, giving yourself self-care, self mm -hmm. uh, there's this thing about called the, the Johari's window. Okay. And it's about understanding yourself, your relationship with you, mm -hmm. your relationship with others, your relationship with your experiences, and your relationship with your future. Mm -hmm. And this is, is, you have to take a journey of discovering you. What okay. do I like? Yes. What do I hate? What, what would make me angry? What would trigger me? You know, it's, I, I am fully conscious of these things around me. Mm -hmm. And if I come home today and I feel I am tired, I don't have to do the dishes, it's okay. Tomorrow is a day. That's good. Most of us, we don't give ourselves room to break. And we have like this perfect future. Like I read in a book that people work out um, every morning you have to work out. Technically, it may not be new, you know. <laughs> and you feel guilty for not working out. But mm -hmm. for you, maybe if you do it twice a week, yes. very fulfilling. Go with your pace. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot of fitting into other people's structures of who we should be mm -hmm. than defining who should I be and then I fit into it in a way that is not affecting other people. But it will also help me to be gracious and kind to others. Love, like taking care of you. Yes. If I, I, okay, taking care. I mean, I mean, you can also like showering, yes. buying yourself things. You know, the people you find they can do things for other people, that, but they do nothing for themselves. They say our parents would spend money on us, but ask them to buy, you know, like uh, buy a shoe for themselves. I mean, another mm -hmm. interesting thing is you go in a hotel, like you go to a hotel, buy yourself chai and mandazi. Some people, they will not do that. I can eat at home. Why should I eat in a hotel? You know, but they are busy giving out money for people to go and eat in this place, but then they can't, you know. It's I about see. choosing what makes me happy. Mm. What makes me peaceful? What brings joy in my life? Can I do that? As long as not at the expense of other people, let me do it, you know. And if it's at the expense of other people, where is the compromise, yeah. you know? Because it's not just also about self, it's also understanding that you're in an environment that you're influencing other people. Mm. But if, if you take time to understand what you like, what works for you. Today, I don't feel like wearing heels. I'll be like, I'll be wearing slippers and it's okay, you know. Yeah. Like, no, you have to, when, you, when you're stuck with keeping up with the facade or the mask, you will not be taking care of yourself at and all. And you'll get tired. And you'll get you will tired. Crumble. And when you do it, and I think most of us, we can attest, people go home and you feel worn out. Yes. You don't enjoy the evening because you've, you've, you've had a whole day of, of charades and you're showing everyone and pleasing and smiling and nodding. And, but it's not genuine, you know, so you're kind yeah. of like, oh my God. Have you ever seen that scenario where you, you, someone says, say hi, hi, and then you smile and then when they're good, you're like. <sighs> then it goes down. <laughs> you know, it's like. Oh, you mm -hmm. walk out of a room and you're just like, that was a lot of work to just smile. smile. I was called out last month. Mm -hmm. A very close friend of mine asked me. Uh, so so no, she was talking about how she is looking forward to getting her present for her own birthday. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wow. So I've seen her do this every other year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't think I've ever bought myself anything. Well, I've done things. Maybe I've traveled, mm. but not alone. Yeah. So it's like, you see, that's not intentional it's not because <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> if, if you want it to be for you, then you do it for yourself. So mm. you give out so much. What do you give yourself? 
Yeah. How do you reach? And it's not selfish. Yeah. That's self-love. Self-love. Selfish is now when it's you're treading on other people to get your things. Yeah. But when you're doing it for yourself, that may be able to be in a state to give out. You yeah. Know? And I think I like I like the new wave of like mommy time. Mommy needs her own time. Yes. Most of us we, we are stuck in keeping up, you know. Even you're not even honest to your spouse to say, I love you, but I need my time. Just mm. give me one day away. Mm. I will disappear for one day and I'll come back. I need to be in a good state of mind to be able to be around you. Yes. You know? And and, and I think I like the way you say treating yourself. Take yourself for a for a massage alone. You don't need alone. to. You don't need support system to do that. You don't no. need to put it on social media. That's it's your thing. You know this is time with Mukali, and and I think I have those moments where I sit in a hotel and I just go to eat alone, and I carry my book and I can spend like four hours there and I go home. Nothing. And it feels good. I just left the house to go eat in a hotel and go back home and it's very therapeutic. This is for me. Yes. And then I can be able to understand when you tell me you need something from me because I do it for me. Yeah. I can be merciful and kind to you and compassionate to you. Yeah. Because it's coming from within. Eh? And if I'm so, able to forgive myself, mm. in the space of loving myself, there's mm. a lot of forgiveness as well. Yeah. So if I'm able to just be kind enough to be like, Mukali, Pole, mm. then it will be easier for me to be like, Pole, Nili mm. Then very it will be easy so easy. And, and, and also, you're also, be able, you're also in a space where you are allowing yourself to grow. You're, yeah. you're, you're a human being. Mm. You can make mistakes. So true. you are allowing yourself to grow, yeah. to become. I mean, I like Michelle saying, becoming Michelle. Yeah. You become Mukali. Mm -hmm. This is me. I, I am human. And I'm sorry I made that mistake. But it's because I understand I am human. I'm not an angel. I'm not perfect. But I'm accepting that I'm human and I have my weakness. <laughs> and our time is up. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much for coming through. This was pretty therapeutic. It's exactly what you need on a Monday morning to mm. just feel yourself go in. And then it will, whatever is going on in here will just flourish outside. Mm. Let it start from within. Let's drop the masks. Let's drop the facades. Let us be real and be truthful in our rawness. Mm. Okay? We're taking a very short commercial break. We'll, no, before we do that, social media, where people can get you. <laughs> See the way I was just in it. Zone. Please. It's okay. Empowerment Hub, Kenya, and on Facebook and on, on Instagram and on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Phone number 0724-394149. Say Matena number. 0724-394149. Okay. Mm. That's how you can get in touch. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs>